Greetings trackers, Bear Tracker Nature Films here and this is the Redwood Forest of Northwestern California and today I'm on an old dirt road obviously no one's driven on this in a long long time but what's interesting is this mark right here notice the paired marks right there what animal could have made that well this is the scrape made by a mountain lion. Let's get into some details and see how this is made and why. So one thing you notice about it is it's not very big. This is a six inch ruler and so there's one foot and the other foot. They make these with their hind feet not their front and what they do is it's a very controlled movement. This is not the flinging motion that you see dogs and uh, doing after they've defecated where they just scratch the ground. See how this duff here has been moved backwards? But it's not flung really far. It's not not like they just choo -choo, like that. They very carefully make controlled movements alternating left and right feet to make these scrapes. Sometimes they'll urinate there, sometimes they'll defecate. In this case it did not. Um, although I have not got down there yet to smell that to see if there's any scent on it. They do sometimes scent these. So they use their hind feet, they stand in one place, and they scrape very carefully. And what that does is it, um, number one, it makes a visual clue. So this is something that if you're another mountain lion and you're just kind of walking around out here in the forest, and say you step over this log, you're going to see that right away. That's a visual clue that something was here, that uh, something happened. To a mountain lion, they recognize these. Um, and they use them to communicate with each other. Location-wise, this is on the edge of a, a drop-off right here that goes down into this canyon, which is pretty steep. That drop-off there is, is uh, quite a ways down. Um, and you can see the trees way down there. So it's a, a location that kind of forces the other animals to use this road. They will go down this embankment, but not by choice. If they've got this perfectly nice dirt road, why would they use that? So this location funnels animals through here and the log slows them down so they have to uh, slow down and step over it. So in a way this is a good location for a scrape because not only are the animals funneled through here but they do have to slow down and that would lead to um, an increased chance that this would be noticed by another animal, particularly another mountain lion. So both male and female mountain lions make scrapes. Um, it's, uh, it can be a territorial thing. They can also do them in what's called community scrapes, where in one area there will be many of these right in the same location. So say it's under a big tree and, and all the mountain lions are sort of attracted to that area, or it's an area like this where all the wildlife is funneled to that place basically. Um, they may make community scrapes there. They might all just stop there, make a scrape, and move on. It's a way of communicating with each other. Obviously they don't see each other because they roam quite large distances. So they, they're not going to be able to communicate with anything other than scent or visual clues like this. So um, this is a way for mountain lions to tell each other they're around, mark their territories, and, and also advertise whether they're looking for a mate. So uh, the males will make these, the females will find them, and uh, it might be a, a way for the, the pheromones or scents that are in either their urine or on the scent glands on the bottom of their feet to communicate to other animals chemical signals that are far beyond our human capabilities of understanding or even sensing and interpreting. So if I was going to demonstrate how they do this, they put their hind feet down and just scrape really carefully, just like that left, right, and then they walk off. Now if it was a dog, it would make a much different, uh, dogs make a much different scrape. Dogs tend to just go like this, kick their feet and really make wildly, wild kicks like that. So there's a difference in the type of scraping between felines and canines. So this is the one I just made and you can see that it's very short distance controlled scrapes as opposed to a really long one like this where I was demonstrating the canine one 
you get a really long, very disorganized scrape with material flung way back over here. This is still wet. This is the stuff I flung back with my feet. So that's a difference between canine and feline scraping behavior. So getting back to this one made by the actual mountain lion, um, there are uh, published measurements in Elbrock's uh, Mammal Tracks and Sign, which I will put in this video, um, that will help tell male from female scrapes based on the width of the scrape and the length and, and uh, things like that. So um, one thing to notice about this, a feline scrape, is that there are just paired marks from the two feet. It was facing this direction when the scrape was made because the material has been pushed back in this direction. So they scrape that way, alternating feet. There's usually a uh, area in the center where the material wasn't moved or hardly moved because they're, you know, using just their two feet. They're not doing a wild, crazy scrape. They're doing a very slow motion, controlled scrape. So look at the uh, those details. You can also sometimes, if it's in the right kind of soil, you might be able to find footprints here and here when the animal pushes backwards onto this material. Sometimes there will be a footprint left there that you can identify. In this case, this is redwood duff. It's very thick stuff. And this, this duff layer is an inch and a half thick at least. And uh, so there are no really good identifiable prints here. Um, I know it's a mountain lion because of the size, the width. It's too wide for a bobcat. Uh, scrape this six inch ruler will help tell that. Bobcats have feet that are a couple inches wide rather than about four inches wide. So a bobcat scrape will look similar, but it's not going to be um, as wide as these marks here. Now for the real bonus. Uh, I know this was made four days ago. Today is February 9th. This was made on February 5th. The reason I know this is I have a trail camera right down the trail and it captured the mountain lion making this scrape. And uh, when I came in to check the disc, uh, I did not walk this far down, so I didn't see this. But when I looked on the video and saw what looked like a mountain lion making a scrape, I had to come back down here and look around, and sure enough, I found it, and that's exactly what this is. So this one is a confirmed one because um, it was captured on trail camera, so I know exactly who made this one. The measurements are also a good way to tell them apart. And like I said, to tell the difference between a canine and a feline, you just look at the uh, the type of scraping action that was done to make it. So this is a real treat to find this. Um, I find them occasionally out here in the woods, but in this type of environment, it's uh, something that's kind of difficult to find because um, the duff layer out here and the grasses and things that cover the forest floor out here in the redwoods, it's pretty thick. and. Uh, if you're not right on it and you don't you don't walk right by it, you're not going to see these things. Um, and especially in the leaf duff, you you can uh, you can walk right by it um, unless it's a really good visual thing like this. So they tend to put them where other mountain lions are going to find them, and um, that's probably why humans don't find them as often because a lot of times mountains are mountain lions are uh, cruising around in places where humans don't tend to go that much, like off trail and. And uh, this just happens to be a place where an old dirt road happens to funnel the wildlife right past here. So it's a good location to look. Um, so look for these when you're out hiking. They're very hard to find on the landscape. But, uh, you know, especially if you're in a forested environment. But areas that, that have sandy environments, they're a lot easier to find. And, and uh, in more open type environments, look for um, places under trees or on the edges of drop-offs, things like that, that would tend to attract the attention of a mountain lion that wants to uh, hang out in those type of areas. So look around in those type of places to see if you can find these. And again, it's a scent marking or territorial type marking where the glands on the bottom of the feet leave scent when they, they scrape right here on the ground. They also oftentimes urinate on them or defecate in these. And uh, so this is just another way to tell that mountain lions are in your area. And it's a rare treat to find one of these. I'm happy that I'm able to bring this to you and describe it for you and let you see what one of these things look like because um, they're they're just treasures when you find something like this this is a um, something to celebrate cause to celebrate that you have found the sign of an elusive animal probably the most elusive and hard to see animal that lives out here in this environment 
Uh, to make this real special, I think I'm going to add the uh, trail camera video of the mountain lion as it cruised through this area on, and I captured it on two cameras. And I will place that video now so you can see the actual mountain lion in action. Note that the, uh, the very end video where the mountain lion is actually making the scrape, it's a little bit further away from the camera, so you have to look carefully to see it. But uh, look closely and note the very controlled motions that it's making with its hind feet to create this scrape. And hope you've enjoyed.